What's going on everybody, Techricity here, and today I'm gonna to be reviewing a phone that has a lot of buzz around it, and that is this one right here. This is the Geoni eLife S7, and hang on, this is gonna be an interesting one. Now, Gioni likes to categorize its smartphones into different categories, that is the S, M, E, and P series, all of which have their own special traits. And even though the Gioni S7 falls in the S series of smartphones that focuses on style and design, this seems to tick most of the boxes in every category. Emphasis on most, but one area where the S7 just knocks out of the ballpark is design. So first things first, this thing is crazy thin. It's one of the thinnest phones in the world, coming in at a mere 5.5 millimeters, and this thin profile gives the phone a really sleek and good look. This phone is basically two slabs of Gorilla Glass 3 bound together by a metal frame, and this frame isn't just a good looker. It's an indented U-shaped frame made out of a magnesium alloy with two reflective parallel lines running through it. In recent times when a phone is this thin, people tend to question the structural rigidity of the handset. With the S7, this isn't a problem because the innovative design makes sure the phone is really strong and rigid while simultaneously providing the user with a much better grip. And this grip also helps perform hand acrobatics to reach the edges of the screen. With a metal frame, super thin profile, and a nice weight to it at 126 grams, which is well balanced throughout the phone, I gotta say this phone feels amazing in the hand. You feel like you're holding jewelry and the awesomely machined chamfered edges only add to the premium feel. Gioni paid attention to the little aspects to the design of the phone. For example, the edges are round enough not to dig into your palm, and the chamfered machining carries on to the power and volume buttons as well. These buttons are snugly placed in the U-frame on the right of the phone, and these buttons sure do give some feedback, which is great. There's a micro USB port that supports USB OTG on the bottom, along with a headphone jack and speaker grill on either side of it. In my opinion, this is the best location for a 3.5mm port, because this lets you put the phone inside your jeans with ease. The speaker can get muffled while watching video, however this is a really good speaker. The sound that comes out of it is superb and unbelievably loud, but when you crank it up to 100%, the sound can get slightly distorted. The top of the phone is bare and the SIM tray is again snugly hidden in the U-frame on the left side of the handset. There are some cons to the design of the phone though. The back glass of the phone it tends to attract smudges and fingerprints, and this takes away from the ultra premium look that this phone is intended to have. Also the screen is a completely different shade of black than the bezel, and again this takes away from the high end look. All in all, this is one of the best design and best looking phones that I've ever seen, and it's a major strong point for the S7. With this slim design, I'm dumbstruck as to how they managed to put the insides of this phone together. Speaking of the insides, this phone is packed pretty well. It's got the octa-core 1.7GHz MediaTek 6752, which is generally a good performer and is energy efficient. We're looking at a Mali T760 pushing graphics and 2GB of RAM. This phone is dual SIM and both of them are 4G enabled. Throughout my testing of this phone, I've never experienced any form of lag, which is great. Geekbench reveals that the phone's strengths lie in multi-core performance where it scored 3825, rather than single-core performance where it has a meager 816. On Intuitu, the phone does pretty well too, with an awesome score of 45497. Overall real-world performance is great. Like I said, you're not going to face any lag, and it handles high-end games really well on high settings. It's also very snappy at buffering and playing video, however, all this performance and thickness come at a cost. When you're playing games or even watching video for a while, the phone heats up pretty quick. On the flip side, it cools down really quickly as well, and this is probably because of the polar cooling Gioni brands the phone with. Although I have to admit that the phone does heat up, I can say that the level of heating while playing games or watching video isn't something to be concerned about. Speaking of watching video, Video, it's a great experience on this phone, and that's because of the display. The display on the S7 is eye candy. If you ever used a Samsung flagship with a 1080p display, you already have a pretty good idea of what this display looks like. It's a 5.2 inch 1080p Super AMOLED screen coming in with a pixel density of 424, making the display really sharp. This being a Super AMOLED display, the blacks are going to be super deep, and the colors are going to pop out of your face, leading to a great experience. Again, just like Samsung flagships, some might love the oversaturation of colors on the S7, whereas others might not. I'm in the former camp because I like the way the colors jump out of the screen, and for the record, there is a setting where you can slightly adjust the color temperature. As expected, the viewing angles are also on point, making this an overall superb display. Also, the bezel on the front panel gives the S7 an Xperia look, and that's great. You're gonna have to be careful with the amount of media you enjoy on the screen because the phone only offers 16 gigs of internal memory, and you're stuck with it. This could be a deal breaker to a lot of people, however, the battery that powers the phone definitely isn't a deal breaker. 
It's a 2750 milliamp hour battery, which is amazing for the size, but in general, not that impressive. To be honest, I had very low expectations for the battery life on this phone. To my surprise, the battery life was great. Although the phone's thickness means you're not gonna get the best battery life, this phone will easily get you through the day and have some in the tank to spare. There's even a battery saving mode that can keep your phone alive for hours on end. Also, standby on this phone is pretty good. You can wake up without charging the phone to a loss of 2-5% max due to some great software optimization. Speaking of software, this phone is on Android 5.0 Lollipop with Yoni's own Amigo OS skin on top. If you've been accustomed to using the regular Android UI, it's gonna take a while to get used to the UI on the S7. Like many Chinese skins, Amigo does not have an app drawer, but surprisingly there's only one page for Android widgets, whereas the other pages are for apps and folders. Amigo is pretty speedy, but a bunch of bloatware comes with it, most of which I removed within an hour. The Lollipop quick settings aren't in the notification bar as usual, but they're in a swipe up menu just like in iOS. It also comes with a bunch of fancy gimmicks like the ability to wave your hand to control the phone or the infamous Chameleon app, things usually found in expensive, top-of-the-line phones. Amigo also puts a lot of effort in the form of localizations depending on what market you're in. Of course, there's that standard theme store that's becoming a trend and it's a really good addition considering that it changes the look of the software. I have to give credit where credit is due and Gioni put a lot of effort into this version of Amigo. Don't get me wrong, Amigo is not bad, but it doesn't feel as polished as something like MIUI or Stock. The inbuilt Gioni apps are well made overall from the cool looking compass to the features in the camera app. Speaking of cameras, there's an 8MP selfie shooter on the front and a 13 megapixel Sony shooter on the back. This is the world's thinnest 13 megapixel camera module and it does away with the irritating trend of protruding cameras in the smartphone space. This is a good camera, it takes some pretty good pictures, but if there was one hit or miss in the S7, it has got to be this camera. Sometimes photos turned out great and sometimes they had some Samsung problems, that means the photos were over sharpened and oversaturated. Now some people like this effect, but I definitely do not. Sometimes photos that look great on the AMOLED screen looked bad on the computer and like in most cameras, this one isn't any good at low light either. I'm going to cut some slack because every picture I took on this phone was on full auto and this camera definitely is capable of taking some amazing shots if you know how to use the plethora of built-in features. The front camera performed surprisingly well in good light but deteriorated in low light as expected. Again, some of the camera modes will help you out a lot here. The camera performance seems to be the Achilles heel of the S7's luxury experience, but by no means is this a bad camera. By the way, the phone just doesn't play with Snapchat. The front camera refuses to record video, and the re video recorded with the back camera gets this weird line on the right side. Hopefully we'll get a fix for this over the air. Now, a lot of people are going to look at the specs of the phone and judge it at face value as being over expensive for what it has to offer. If you're only looking for specs and pure power in a phone, then that statement is true for you. However, it's not true for everyone. What Gioni tried to offer with the S7 is not only a great phone, but a luxury experience. Straight from the unboxing, they spoil you with accessories, some of which even have their own gimmicks. From the design and build, to the software gimmicks, to the display, to the real world performance, to the battery life, and even to goddamn Amigo, Gioni has been selling a premium experience and not a powerhouse phone. When you're holding and using the S7, you're definitely going to feel like you're holding something from the upper echelon of smartphones, and from that perspective, the price is very well justified compared to the alternatives. If you're a spec head, this phone probably isn't for you. If you enjoy a luxury experience, I think it's a great option. Alright guys, so that was my review of the Gioni eLife S7. You can also read a written review of this on my new website, that is techricity.org. Please like this video if you did, because that really helps the video out. And as always, I will hit you guys up in the comment section down below. Follow me on social media, but please, please, above all, do not forget to subscribe, because that's what keeps me going, that's what helps me push out more and more videos. So do not forget to subscribe, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.